I hope you had a good time in Paris and uh, outside and inside the meeting. The weather has been very great and uh, there was only one strike this week, so please feel very privileged. And uh, I will, uh, so now, um, uh, thanks Marco Hother for this uh, lecture, uh, which was part of my PhD program and which was published in a, a let's say, hard science journal recently, but I will cut the math in this thing and try to convey you with the clinical relevance of this. Uh, I think we should move away maybe from Zernikis in ophthalmology. The wavefront analysis is quite important because it enables you to segregate between low order aberration and higher order aberration, which are usually the, 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 the object of customized correction and you build your custom correction on the exact extraction of the high order aberration and you can also predict visual acuity, visual quality using this high order information. So it has to be reliable. But there's a big problem with the Zernikis that has been overlooked in ophthalmology. In fact, they fail to deliver predictions in terms of accuracy. Uh, it's not really high and low order. In fact, some terms uh, are present in some high order modes of low order. It's, probably uh, more obvious on, uh, on, on, on this, for example, example. You can see that this patient came for uh, LASIK, was 2015 uncorrected, but the wavefront analysis showed some myopic defocus there. Of course, lots of positive spherical aberration, lots of tilt, and uh, unrealistic image uh, prediction for someone who's uh, 2015 for only higher order aberration. You know also for those of you who use some, some platforms that you have to compensate some modes uh, of uh, correction when you have these C12 adjustments, when you play with aspherity, et cetera, et cetera. The problem again lies in the fact that even if you're not a wavefront expert, you, you probably know that a flat wavefront is for no aberration. So if you have a higher order aberration, it should not be tormented in the center, but really flat. And some modes are okay, but in the center of the pyramid, the high order modes are quite tormented here. And this is a contamination by uh, low order terms. Again, that would be the, uh, the, the typical wavefront of a patient with halo. It's flat in the center and the problem is in the periphery. But with the Zernikis, because of the odd shape of the spherical aberration, some compensatory defocus is added and it is causing a wrong estimation of the low order, it interferes with it and it, and, and it biases the estimation of the defocus. So it also reduces the real amount of the aberration there. So there's a lot of artifact there. It's uh, also even more important when you reconstruct corneas with Zernikis, all these things will uh, provide you with an accurate estimation of uh, central power and true amount of spherical aberration. It's not only for uh, spherical uh, aberration. Same thing occurs with coma, for example. When the patient fixates properly, the central portion of the wavefront should be quite flat. But in the Zernike, there's tilt embedded in the coma, causing this slope there. It has to be compensated, and, th and then some tilt is introduced, which is again explaining why when you have coma, you, are, you always have tilt, like if the patient is not fixating well, but it's an artifact. And you see the apparent reduction in the coma by a factor three here. So so whereas threefold, which is okay, would not be affected by those, does, by those little tricks. So again, that could be al already enough, but the worst is for astigmatism. Secondary astigmatism has the same problem. It has some low order astigmatism embedded with, which is causing again a fourfold reduction of the magnitude of the true high order astigmatism and introduces the exact amount of low order astigmatism. So all these things are confusing and we thought it would be nice to have a new classification where obviously you see at least the high order modes in the center are now flat, paraxially flat, neutral in terms of a low order aberration as it should be. And we published this in the paper. For this, we, have, we had to solve some mathematical issues and sacrifice orthogonality between low and higher order spaces, but that's not a problem because in ophthalmology, we don't compute RMS between low and high order modes. We want to know the high order RMS and you can calculate these, all these polynomials are orthogonal and, and, and normalized. So um, again, we were lucky that NIDEC introduced in a beta software these computations which do not require a new acquisition. You can compute from Zernike the new coefficients. And uh, I show you now what is the new uh, um, display here with the new LD low degree, high degree classification. Tilt has vanished, it was an artifact. Coma is now 
the true value of it, which is more than in the Zernike where it's artificially minored, and the spherical collaboration, which is also minored in the Zernike, is now fully expressed. What is most important is the prediction. Because here you have the focus in that mode, it makes it uh, completely irrelevant for retinal image prediction, whereas in the Zernike here, you see that it matches more what the patient sees in the 2015 refraction. Same for keratoconus, we have the same issue that we can fix with this new classification and uh, again show more the true relevance of high order modes in, uh, compared to the small and better correlation between uh, the low uh, order uh, refraction in the LDHD uh, mode uh, as shown here. So in conclusion, I think with this classification you can improve the quality and the prediction from the wavefront analysis and this will be important if you want to conceive better customized correction. Thank you very much.